Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. New day, new lure. We're going to start with a little bit of chartreuse, golden chartreuse, along the bottom here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting a walleye lure. So the ice is off the water, and now we're going to start fishing, fishing, fishing the open stuff. So let's start working on a, on a new pattern here for me. And we have some, just these cutout dots, painter's tape. That's a six millimeter dot right there. We'll paint it on, or just place it on the side. Uh, that's a four millimeter dot. And we're gonna follow it up with a three millimeter dot. So if you haven't noticed, I'm doing something a little bit different today. Uh, between, you know, crying baby in the house and dogs wanting attention and, you know, just trying to keep up with, with regular duties here, I'm gonna have to do a voiceover. So hopefully that works and we'll go from there. So got our dots in place. We'll, uh, we'll kind of cover up the rest with some white just to make that chartreuse stand out from underneath. And obviously we're drying in between. Put some teal on for our base. Kind of blend it in a little bit to the bottom, but not, not too crazy. We do want that bit of contrast here. So the goal is to kind of blend a few different of like my favorite patterns together uh, to, make, to make something different, to make something that kind of stands out. So obviously with my, my favorite ribbon mesh here, we'll, we'll just cover with the clips on the top uh, because we're going to leave that for our, our last color. So throw some blue, spray over top. And thanks for all your patience, by the way, for the past couple of weeks. I know it's it's been crazy around here, but I'm sure it's been crazy for all of you. So yeah, thanks for, thanks for tuning in now. Got some fluorescent green. Spray the belly. And again, if you blend up to the sides, it'll it'll just it'll look great. Added a little bit of heat again before taking off the clamps. Peel it back. All right. So you can see on the sides there, the ribbon kind of dug into the paint a little bit. Not the end of the world. The The base coat, the white, is, is still intact. So I just kind of sprayed over again with some more fluorescent blue. Now here's a, a cray stencil. I had to modify it a little bit. Kind of cut the, the larger section off. Trace it onto some tape. And we'll get it in place. Spray over with the eraser, the white. Yeah, I think my tape's getting old. It's having a hard time adhering. Heat, followed by some witty golden yellow as our base, and basically just spray it over top of the, uh, basically all over the white. Add some heat after this. Some sepia. Turn the pressure down, try and get some detail, and all we're going to do is just trace along the outside of the tape. So the reason I'm doing this first is because this is going to add the contrast color for the outline of the shell. Now I know we're going for bright colors and to put sepia into a bright color lure sounds a bit counterintuitive, which is why we're putting it on first. Because the color after this is going to be a fluorescent orange. And fluorescent orange, most fluorescent colors actually, they're not very thick, I guess you would call it. Uh, let's, we'll connect the shells here. So like most fluorescent colors, if you have a darker color underneath, it will still show through. So not a lot of concern here. And I'll just add some more depth and some more texture, which is going to be perfect. Yeah, just add some spots along the side. Now here's that fluorescent orange I was telling you about. We're going to use that mottled stencil from Anarchy. And just basically our focus is going to be just down the middle for the first one. We'll get down the sides as well, but... We're going to be blending the sides in, so yeah, go down the middle, 
I had to reposition just because of the shape of the lure. And now I'm going to go a bit heavier on the sides, going over that sepia just to help blend it in. But again, it's still going to show through in the finished product, which is nice. Now, I'm going to go away from the heavy spray on the top because I do want that that shell look, like that, that model -y shrimp kind of look. And that's another thing. I always have a hard time finding a name for a lure. Uh, I'm sure it's pretty obvious when you when you look at it. Uh, sorry, we'll go over again with the modeled. Just go random all over the place. Don't keep things uniform. Just go all over and it's really going to kind of just increase that modeled look. Peel everything off. So what I really like about this pattern is that we have kind of like a natural looking cooked shrimp uh, shell on the top, but the sides are still that very like traditional kind of almost unicolor type fishing lure, which which I love. Like the walleye are going to see this no problem, uh, which is exactly what I want. Uh, this year was a pretty tough year just because there was tons of bait available. For the, for the fish in like our big lakes and stuff like that. And uh, some of the best advice I got is that when there's tons of bait around, switch to bright colors. So I think, uh, I think we checked that mark. Get some eyes in there. Okay, now for the uh, for the finished product here, what we're gonna do is we'll we'll get some clear coat on here uh, after we get the tape off, obviously, and yeah, we'll, we'll come out for the for the conclusion, the big reveal, and uh, yeah, hopefully there's no 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 crying babies or or run around upstairs, and we'll uh, we'll we'll come right back. Okay, thanks. Here it is. I like how it turned out. Very, very happy. I like how the modeling gives it more of like a natural model color versus just like your standard bright, vibrant, slappy in the face colors. Uh, yeah, I, I'm very happy. And to, to be honest, I think this might be my new my new favorite walleye pattern. Yeah. Okay. Let me know what you think down below. Thanks so much for tuning in and take care. Bye.